I really wanted to love this keyboard. This is the Mountain Everest 60, which is obviously a 60% keyboard from the brand Mountain. And I figured at this size, when space is at a premium for a setup like this, it would be a great candidate. And while the keyboard itself doesn't really have any problems, when it comes to the software is where I found the shortcomings to be. So let's go ahead and unbox this and take a look at the whole setup. When it comes to packaging, it clearly is a step above your standard cardboard box, giving off that premium experience that they're clearly going for. Once opened, you've got the keyboard itself, which is a hefty 768 grams or about 1.7 pounds. Testing out the flex of the keyboard, you really have to try to get it to do any, and that's probably helped by the aluminum top. Removing a key shows that it uses a standard cherry connector and it appears to be their mountain linear 45 type switches. At the top is three USB-C ports that allow you to connect to your PC in the best configuration for your setup, which is a nice touch. Going back to the box, we've got a USB type A to USB-C to connect the board to your computer, a keycap remover so you can easily swap out your keys, four magnetic feet that allow you to adjust the height and angle of the board as you see fit, a fancy mountain keycap to replace any key as you see fit, and the all important manual and some stickers. Neat. Attaching the feet is super simple because it just uses magnets, so you just stack them on top of each other to get the desired height as you feel comfortable with. The ports on the board are for only connecting to the PC, and that's it, so if you want a USB hub on your keyboard, you're going to have to look at a different one. Now that it's plugged in, let's do a keystroke test to see what these switches sound like. Being a linear key, there's no tactile click when you're typing, which reduces the volume and the feedback. That's going to be about preference, but to me this delivers a softer typing experience, and with a lower resistant weight at 45 grams, I can see it being more responsive than the Cherry Blues that I normally use. Since this is a 60% keyboard, if you're used to the features of a full keyboard, you'll want to get familiar with the function key macros in the manual to make sure you get the full use out of the board's options. For instance, pressing the function key in the either left or right will change the preset RGB settings on the keyboard. Speaking of the arrow keys, it is impressive that there is arrow keys on a keyboard of this size. It seems to be most 60% leave them out, but that does mean that the shift key has been reduced to a standard keycap size instead of a wider one. For software, Mountain has the wonderfully named Basecamp application that should allow you to edit macros, lighting, and more. That is, if it works. As you can see here, my keyboard is connected to the computer, but it's not registering that it's there. Even if I unplug it and plug it back in, the software will not detect that it's there, forcing me to restart for it to hopefully show up the next time my computer boots. Even if the keyboard does show up in the application, it just seems to break at random when trying to make changes in it. For instance, we're going to select a lighting setting, and you'll see that the software freezes, and if I try to change the lighting on the keyboard using the macros, it'll just disconnect the board, and the software will just continuously loop. I wanted to verify that it wasn't just this computer, so I tried it on two different computers, and I had the same results. I followed support's advice on this one as well, reinstalling the application and factory resetting the keyboard, and nothing changed. Searching online, I did see other people were faced with the exact same problem that I was facing, and I even noticed that Tom's Hardware Review also mentioned this. As far as the actual performance and day-to-day -day use of the keyboard, I really enjoyed it. That's the funny thing. While the software component may need work, it can easily be forgotten if what you're looking for is a quiet, mechanical keyboard at this form factor that is seemingly well-designed and manufactured. Getting used to the shift and delete keys location will take some time if you're used to a full-size board, but reconfiguring those to allow arrow keys on this keyboard at this form factor is totally worth it. And if you are someone who wants a numpad eventually or occasionally, this board is modular and allowing you to add one to either side, and while I wasn't sent one to to test that, I do think it's worth noting. So after using this for about two weeks, my final thoughts are that this is clearly a great piece of hardware that provides a premium keyboard experience at about a $75 price point. And while the software could be better, that can be fixed with updates. The board here is great out of the box, so you can likely avoid the software altogether. Let me know what your thoughts are, and until next time, cheers!